is looking at hedging a short position in the underlying using options. So a short position in the underlying is a bearish position. When you short sell something, you borrow it, sell it with the intention of buying it back lower later on and giving it back to the lender. So it's a bearish position. You're looking to benefit from a price decline. The risk is that you end up buying the asset back higher because the stock price rises. So this is a bearish position. If we think about um, our negative S position, um, it actually wins as the underlying declines and it loses as the, under, as the underlying goes up. Don't forget the, uh, the implied axis here is that the underlying is the horizontal axis. So that's a short position. How, are, how might we hedge this? Well, if we think about our option payoff diagrams, here's our option diamond again that we've drawn a few times now over the course of these modules. We've got our longs on the top, our shorts on the bottom, our calls on the left, and our puts on the right. There are our four option payoffs in terms of their shapes. Which ones pay off when the underlying goes up? Because that's what we need protection against with a short position. We need protection against the underlying going up. Well, of course, a long call wins as the underlying goes up, and a short put um, does better as well as the underlying goes up. Um, so these are the two candidates in terms of option positions that will help hedge a short stock position. Uh, a long call is really buying protection. Uh, the long call will pay out, as we know, as the underlying rises. And really, this is similar to a protective put, isn't it? The protective put is long the underlying and long a put. Here, we're going short the underlying and long a call. We're buying protection in the option. The option will pay out when we suffer losses in the underlying position. That's what's happening here. So what you pay for the call is going to be a drag on performance because you always lose that premium, but you will keep the upside of prices declining. Let me show you what I mean by that. Um, if you take a short position, so minus S, don't forget the underlying axis is S here and this is P and L. Let me think about what the axes are. So we take a short position and what we're going to do here is we're going to buy a call to protect us against these losses when the price goes up. Don't forget, we lose money as prices go up uh, with a short position. So let's buy a call uh, that looks like this. That's a long call, top left of the option diamond. And then if I put these together, then we've got our, hasn't got a name this one, but it's kind of like um, protective call, if you like, isn't it? So what have we got here? Well, to the left of the strike, we've still got upside, haven't we? Because we still benefit from the underlying asset falling. That's what we mean by keeps upside. It means we benefit from the declining asset price. But on the right, um, these two lines cancel out. Oh, look at that. What does that look like? Yes, well, once again, we're going to evoke our, do you remember our basic put call parity? Ignoring the funding, the borrowing to finance the synthetic long position. What we've done here is we've got minus S plus C. So minus S, bring that over here, plus C has got to be equal to add P to both sides. There you go. That's what's happened. That is a long put. It's a synthetic long put position. And it's no surprise that, that that's what's happened with the hockey sticks, the diagrams, because, you know, the equation, the, the put call parity type equation gets us there quite quickly. And the other thing that you could do is not quite such a good um, hedge in terms of buying protection. You could sell a put to generate income against a short position. That will take the edge off prices rising because, of course, the put wouldn't be exercised and you'd just keep the premium if prices went up. However, that does remove the benefit of stock prices falling because as the stock price falls below the put strike, you'll start losing under a short put. Okay, now there's quite a lot going on there, but there it is. That's a short put. What we're saying is that um, when we fall below the strike, we start losing money on this position, and that will out, that will offset, cancel any gains that we make through being short the underlying. Okay. In fact, just for completeness, we might as well take this to its natural conclusion. If you sell a put against a short position, 
So here's your short position. There it is. Okay, the axes are implied as in the same. You sell a put against that. What do you do? Well, we're looking at something that loses as the underlying goes down, but you keep the premium if the underlying goes up. That is the bottom right of the uh, options diagram. There it is. We've seen it before. There it is. So when I combine these two, when I think about what these two will look like when I combine them together, all right, minus S minus P, let's just carve this universe up again around the strike. To the left of the strike, they cancel each other out, so that's a flat line. To the right of the strike, we've got a downward sloping line and a flat line, so that is, well, what's that? Well, that's minus C, isn't it? That's a short call. That looks like a short call, doesn't it? The bottom left of the options triangle. And indeed, put call parity, when we don't worry about the financing of the underlying geared position, put call parity, which says C minus P, is a geared position in the underlying. If we re rearrange that for minus S minus P, uh, then we put that C on the other side, take C off of both sides. Yes, that's right, short call. So once again, both graphically or um, formulaically, we can see that Hedging a short position by selling a put um, leads us to have a short call exposure, a synthetic short call exposure.